Hello, everybody. It is Memorial Day weekend, September 2nd, 2018, 6.35 p.m. And if you can even make out the fact that this is the continental U.S., then uh, you have some pretty good eyes because there is so much going on in the Gulf right now that any bit of moisture that enters this area is turning into a severe storm. We can clearly see we have a lot of storms going on in the Louisiana area. That also includes southeast Texas. Uh, this is going to roll up into Alabama, Mississippi. But uh, this has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about right here. And that is the potential uh, tropical cyclone 7, which if named will become Gordon. Now, they are projecting this to become a tropical depression once it gets right past the Florida Keys. Um, no doubt about it, we'll be dumping very heavy rain on South Florida, regardless if this becomes a tropical cyclone or not. But the point here is that if this thing makes it into the Gulf, all that all this thing has is space to grow. So uh, that's why they are calling it a potential tropical cyclone, because once it reaches the, the open warm waters of the Gulf, that's where it's going to get stronger. And these storms tend to move pretty slow once they get in the Gulf. There are occasions where storms move quicker. Usually those are the storms that come from the Southern Caribbean. That's not what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with a system that is basically formed. Uh, basic, it started over the Puerto Rico area and then got stronger as it got towards the Bahamas. But as you could see on our last frame here, you can almost see a little bit of an eye there. That could be just a gap in, this, in the storms itself. But regardless, they are talking about this a lot. We can verify this by the weather.com article they are posting. They're projecting this thing to come right underneath the Bahamas, across South Florida, clearly over the Keys. And then once it passes this border right here is when we need to really keep an eye on this because that is where the potential cyclone formation is going to be at its highest level. So this thing is going to have from this area all the way up into Pensacola in the Panhandle. We got Mississippi and Alabama here, and then we have uh, New Orleans. So the reason that this is such a big deal is because of the Gulf water. This water is so warm that it is more than uh, capable of producing tropical cyclones. And again, I just I can't stress this enough, guys. These do not have to become tropical storms or hurricanes to cause uh, major flooding issues in all of these Gulf states. We're talking rip currents, wind gusts, um, the high surf. This is almost a guarantee, again, whether or not this becomes a cyclone or not. Now, again, if this does become a tropical storm, which comes after tropical depression, that will be named Gordon. Um, it's whichever happens first, because we already have Florence, Gordon would be next, and then Helena would be after that. Now, we do have um, possible Helena forming off the coast of Africa, uh, right behind Florence. So we're going to look at that in a second, but just check out the lightning going on in the U.S. right now. The Gulf is producing most of this, especially what you're seeing in Florida and then up into the Carolinas. This is all moisture being swooped up into this direction as we have another flow west to east coming this way. So everything is being forced down into this area, and that is why everything basically underneath uh, you can crisscross the line from the Great Lakes all the way down to Southern California. Everything in the U.S. underneath that is basically getting saturated besides a little piece of the Northeast. It's actually uh, pretty blue skies and sunny where I am right now in Northeast Pennsylvania, but that's not going to last too long. So you could see for yourself this lightning is just going off like crazy, and the Gulf is just ready to fire up. So... Uh, with that said, let's move on to some of these serious situations we uh, potentially could be dealing with. We can clearly see right here, this is Tropical Storm Florence. Uh, this thing is going to marinate for a little bit. This is going to follow a path uh, basically through the center of the Atlantic. Um, I have checked all the models. Every single model has this storm becoming a hurricane and getting up into this area. And this right here is where the models begin to disagree. Most of the models, guys, believe it or not, have this thing making a landfall around September 11th to September 13th around uh, North Carolina, possibly South Carolina, possibly Virginia. And I'm going to show you that uh, with the data that we have. And uh, the GFS has this storm coming up dangerously close to the northeast. And once again, guys, just like Hurricane Irma, 
even though Irma did take that southern path eventually, the original data had Irma literally landing on New York on 9-11. And, and if you guys remember last year, I posted a video about that. Um, it did get some pretty decent attention, but because the storm didn't go that way, the data changed. It, you know, I got the flack for it, whatever. Um, I make these videos based on data at the current time, so I'm totally fine with that. But this is the ex exactly one year ago that we were talking about Irma possibly hitting New York City on 9-11. So this was one year ago. Uh, Hurricane Irma still set to hit New York on 9-11. This was about a two-week... Um, th this chart that I was reading at the time was about two weeks out. So we're talking 14 days the difference with this situation is we're talking about eight or nine days out. So the data is a little bit more collected. It's a little bit more accurate. So let's check out what we think is going to happen here. Um, as we look at our five-day chart, we can see potential tropical cyclone 7 right here. It's just underneath the Bahamas, just above Cuba. And it looks like it's going to slip and stay in the waters, like I said, saturating South Florida. And then once it gets into this area, guys, this is when we really, really, really need to keep an eye on this storm. And that's going to be early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, that could be when we start seeing tropical storm warnings all the way from the panhandle, um, possibly all the way into southeast Texas. So don't be surprised if you start seeing those tropical storm warnings. It's the time of year. This is what happens. Um, this is what everyone's been talking about. And now we have Florence to worry about because the models are all coming together saying that this storm can very well have an uh, impact on the east coast of the U.S. It's just a matter of where. Basically, the line that we are looking at is from, uh, like I said, South Carolina. It would be more, of, uh, be more of northeast South Carolina going up through North Carolina and then Virginia and even including Delaware. And then according to the GFS, this storm wants to be right around here. So here are the current spaghetti plots for Florence. You can see they have drastically changed. Most of the spaghetti models had this thing coming up, and then a high-pressure system coming off the U.S. pushed it right up into Ireland. But now these charts are showing different stories here. You could see a lot of the, uh, the spaghetti plots have this thing getting right off the coast of the Carolinas up into the Virginia area. And then we have a couple of these little purple ones coming up into this area. So let's check it out and let's look for ourselves. And now just to verify this, this is a 90% chance now, guys, for the, uh, the Gulf Storm we're talking about, which could become Gordon. And it will only become Gordon if it becomes a tropical storm. Tropical depressions do not get names. It's the level after tropical depressions, as you can see down here. Tropical depression would represent a circle. Tropical storm would represent the hurricane symbol with the circle cut out in the middle. And then a hurricane is the full hurricane symbol. Um, and we're dealing with an X right now, which is a 60% chance or higher of cyclone development. So we just got to wait and see if this thing is going to take a name. Uh, but like I said, guys, that does not mean that this thing will not cause um, serious situations in the Gulf states. So again, we have to wait it out a little bit longer, but we're talking just a few days before this thing is going to start affecting the Keys and South Florida. And then once past that area, that is where this place needs to be looked at with a microscope. And I will be here to do that for you. Now, um, these are the current paths that they think this potential tropical cyclone will take. You can see it is just cutting across southern Florida. If it does miss southern Florida, that will even raise the chances of this thing becoming even stronger. The less land interaction it makes, the stronger it will become. So, um... It's like a double-edged sword. If it does hit South Florida, which we obviously don't want it to do, um, that will actually delay the strengthening of it throughout the Gulf. Now, if it misses, it will get stronger. So it's we don't want it to hit Florida, but at the same time, if it does, that will possibly save some uh, unfortunate times for the states in the Gulf. So, like I said, double-edged sword. We just don't know what's going to happen, but something will happen. That's That's the main point here. Uh, with this storm. This is a very unique storm forming um, in a very unique spot. Uh, for more times than none, if our, our hurricanes are forming in the South Caribbean or they're coming off that west coast of Africa, which would be way out here where my mouse is in this black screen where you see absolutely nothing. So,
All right, let's check this out some more uh, with some more detail. Tropical Storm Florence, we're at 55 knots at the moment. Like I said, the storm is going to marinate for a while as it moves up into the middle of the Atlantic. But now let's check out what the models have to say about this. Let's start with the Canadians. Now I have it set on September 12th. We're going to back this up. And we're going to start from right now as we speak. September 2nd. And this is what the Canadians say are going to happen. You're going to watch Florence. It's going to stay south. That's because of the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic we're always talking about. There is the possible tropical cyclone we're talking about uh, that could um, possibly get a name, guys. We could be talking about Gordon right here. Now, this is Florence. This is Gordon. And then we have another system behind it with a 20% chance of formation. So if Gordon stays a tropical depression and then hits land and dissipates, this will become Gordon. It's whichever one becomes a tropical storm first. That's how the naming goes. So, let's finish this out. Canadian models have uh, Hurricane Florence moving up through the Atlantic Ocean, staying a bit south. Now we're crossing the threshold of South Florida. And then as we move into September 9th, September 11th, and then we have September 12th, and that is the end of the data right there, basically making landfall around North Carolina and Virginia's border. So we're looking at a September 12th date if the Canadian model holds true with the possibility of Gordon or Helena if this becomes Gordon. I know some of this can be confusing, but again, all you got to remember is whichever of these storms becomes a tropical storm first, that gets the next letter. So it's hard to tell which is going to be which right now. Um, there is a possibility that Gordon will be right here um, taking over the Gulf for right now. And now, like I said, guys, you're going to be seeing these low pressure systems coming off the west coast of Africa one after another, after another, after another. It's going to be a very active September, uh, certainly moving into October. So this may be something we are going to be talking about on a daily basis with storm after storm after storm, just like we finished doing in the Pacific Ocean. So, all right, that was the Canadian version. Now let's look at what the Europeans have to say. All right, we're already at September 12th. The Europeans have Florence um, basically in the same exact spot as the Canadian model does, uh, right at North Carolina um, and the Virginia border as a very strong storm, guys. We're talking Category 3, 120 miles an hour. I'm verifying that with the GFS version on Ventu Sky. Uh, you can see I am 10 meters off the ground right here, so this is very accurate to what you would feel if this storm were to hit land. Um, and you can see right here, we're at 120 miles an hour, 118, 119, there's the 120. That is well within Category 3 range. Um, once it reaches 130 miles an hour, that would be a Category 4 storm right off the northeast coast. And again, guys, this is just very weird because this is the exact path that we originally had for Hurricane Irma one year ago, literally to the day. So that is why I'm stressing this so much. Tropical Storm Florence. We scroll down here. We see the spaghetti plots. All the plots have this thing coming dangerously close to the northeast. And then you have the uh, cone of uncertainty here. And if you notice, these are all S's. That means it's a tropical storm. And it's not going to be until about this area where it gets into a little bit of a, of a warmer water area where it becomes a hurricane. And then that's when it's going to flourish and head up in this direction. And that's where the difference is going to be between the GFS and the European and the Canadian models uh, basically being the same as a uh, North Carolina-Virginia landfall. So, guys, we're getting close to these dates. We're not talking two weeks out like we did last year. We're talking eight, nine days. Um, yes, there could be little fluctuations in where it goes, but uh, the point of the matter is that the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic is now forcing these storms south, which is what puts the northeast at risk. Now, if you guys remember Irma, rather than coming north, we had a high pressure bubble form in the Bermuda Atlantic here that kept it pressed down, and that's why Irma came this way instead of rising up. So, this could change, um, but because of the timing, I don't see much of a change happening. So we went through the Canadian model. Here is the European model. And now the GFS is the one that's bringing this thing closest to areas of 
the uh, Chesapeake Bay, Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island, and then we got New York in there. And again, guys, very, very similar path to the initial data we had with Hurricane Irma exactly one year ago, basically to the day. You could see right here by September 11th, the GFS has this storm right here. And then as we move into the 12th, this thing is moving quickly north. And then by the 13th, this actually changed a little bit in the last hour. We have a high pressure system that's going to be moving west to east off the U.S. That is what we are hoping will push this storm out before it makes any sort of landfall. But if we even take two hours off this thing being delayed every day until September 11th, this storm has a very, very high chance of making a landfall anywhere from... Uh, like I said, North Carolina, all the way up into basically Massachusetts. Now, this is a very, very big storm, guys. This could be a Category 4 storm, very strong Category 3 storm. Now, because these models are coming together so close, that's why we need to watch this. And it's very important that people do, uh, because a lot of the mainstream media weather channels... They won't even really talk about this until it's like basically right at the front door. Uh, they do cover uh, some of the storms. They're actually putting more emphasis on this uh, storm here in the Bahamas right now that's going into the Gulf than they are looking at Florence, only because Florence has a long way to go before it gets into the area of the east coast of the U.S. But that does not mean we are not going to talk about it. When you see stuff like this, this is why we post these videos. And we can thank Caroline for that because she sent me this updated chart right here, which basically brings this thing right off the coast of Long Island, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, and so on and so forth. So if this thing does make a landfall in the northeast, Every one of these states will be absolutely affected, even if the, uh, the European model and the Canadian models are right. Uh, it will still affect the Northeast because the storm will go in this direction. And then if that high pressure comes off the U.S. and then begins to push it, it's just going to push it right up into New York and Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. And then it's going to go up past Nova Scotia and then over into Ireland, which just always gets the remnants of our storms, unfortunately. So... Uh, once again, guys, here you go. This is the updated possible wind speeds we could be dealing with uh, by September 11th, which is as far as I can go on Ventu Sky right now. This is via the GFS model, 10 meters off the ground. Um, this is Category 3 right here, 10 miles an hour stronger, and this will be a Category 4 storm. Um, again, there is time for change, but we are narrow, uh, narrowing that time frame and when you get within a week, that is when you can really start relying on this data. So uh, this will be a daily update um, from my channel, at least possibly two to three videos a day uh, to make sure that we are all up to par on where this thing is going to go. Um, it's just, it's kind of mind boggling to me that we're dealing with a storm that is literally following the same exact path that Irma was supposed to follow literally centering over New York City on 9-11. If you guys remember that video I posted, um, it's just the way things are going right now, guys. Uh, we are at peak hurricane season in the Atlantic, so uh, this is why we do this stuff on this channel. I mean, uh, September into October are those months where we just see rapid-fire storms, and for the last couple seasons, that's what it's been. And with the action we had in the Pacific Ocean... As I explained in a couple of videos, it was backtracking, almost like the storms were forming quicker in the Pacific and closer to uh, the little landmass of Mexico that connects the Atlantic to the Pacific. And now these storms are forming in the Atlantic. So uh, that's very close to home. So one more time, we're going to check out this radar. We can see the entire Gulf is just totally saturated in heavy storms. And then just as we get to frame 200, we, be, we can begin to see that center rotation that's going to start moving underneath Florida. Definitely heavy rains, heavy storms going on in South Florida in the coming days. Um, and that is regardless whether or not this thing becomes a cyclone or not. So um, I hope I wasn't skipping around too much. I hope I wasn't a little... I'm excited here, even though I might sound it. It's just when things like this happen, guys, we need to be prepared. It's got it's 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 not something to mess with. We all know what these storms did last year. We all know Puerto Rico has still yet to even recover from last year. Um, a year ago, uh, Hurricane Maria totally decimated this poor island, and they are just starting to get their power back. Dominican Republic suffered the same fate. 
um, in many ways. Haiti in there, and then Cuba is the reason that Irma didn't basically destroy the entire west coast of Florida. So, a lot can happen in a short period of time, but you're seeing what I'm seeing, guys. They are predicting that Florence will indeed make it far enough west to where it will be an effect on the east coast of the U.S., all we are hoping for is that this high pressure bubble is going to come sooner than later and push this thing out before it gets here. Now, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but as every day goes by, if this high pressure delays even two hours a day, that is why the Europeans, as you can see, I'll show you once more, the Canadians and the Europeans have this thing basically making a landfall. Now, that is because they're projecting that high pressure to delay and not be there to push the storm away. The only model that is projecting that to be pushed away is the GFS. As you can see, as we move into the 12th and the 13th, it just barely nicks Massachusetts and the outer areas of uh, Long Island and then gets pushed out towards Nova Scotia. So we are really dealing with minute details here that are going to make or break whether or not we have to... Um, prepare for this storm as in food and water and shelter and things of that nature, which I never like talking about, but reality is reality. So there you have it, guys. 120 mile per hour winds on September 11th as this thing uh, travels west and then north as it gets into the northeast. So basically, long story short, the GFS has this thing coming up to the northeast, the CMC model, which is Canadian. And the European models have this thing getting almost landfall into North Carolina and Virginia. So we're going to have a lot to talk about over the next few days. I know it is a holiday weekend, so many of you may not see this video until uh, tomorrow um, or even Tuesday for that matter. But there will be more videos coming about this. And um, that is a fact. So... There you have it, guys. The Gulf needs to be on very high alert right now. Again, whether or not this storm forms into a cyclone, this is going to cause severe weather in southern Florida. The Keys are going to get completely drenched, saturated with storms, and then this thing is coming right to the panhandle. It's going to Mississippi and Alabama, and it's going to go right into New Orleans. And then once it's in the Gulf, it's anyone's guess. This thing could become a Category 1 storm. And if that's the case, that would be Gordon. Now, I want to show you one more thing before I let you go. I try not to drag these videos on too long for you guys anymore because uh, we just want to get the data out there without me repeating myself. I know I'm a repeater, uh, which is fine with me. I know a lot of you don't mind either, but here we go. Disturbance number two, chance of cyclone formation in five days. So we need to keep an eye on this as well because we showed you those waves coming off of Africa. There's five and six waves just on their way out into the ocean. So this will not be the last of these uh, invests that we're looking at. This is just one of many. Now the next names that we have to deal with, we have Florence. The next one's going to be Gordon, whether it's going to be Gordon here or Gordon there, that is the next name. Then we have Helena, which is already projected to be coming off the west coast of Africa. Then we're going to be dealing with Isaac and then Joyce. So those are the next names for the Atlantic. Um, and I think that's it. Let's see if we covered everything. We got our spaghetti plots. The current direction, once again, guys, I'm going to say this every video. I know it's repetitive. This is the current direction of the storm. This is currently where Florence is heading. But it's going to make a northern turn, but we just need to see how far west it's going to go before it wants to make that hook and get pushed out by a high pressure coming west to east across the U.S. All right, that's enough repeating. That's enough warning. That's enough uh, anxiety for one day, to put it lightly. But uh, guys, that's the reality. We need to keep an eye on our Gulf states, our friends in the Gulf, and then the Northeast where a lot of us live. A lot of my subs live in the Northeast and uh, we need to just keep an eye on this stuff because it is forming fast, it's happening quickly, and it's been a kind of a slow start, but things are going to pick up. Uh, that much I can basically guarantee you. We are not going to see uh, just Florence, Gordon, and Helena. We are definitely going to see Isaac and Joyce and probably even farther into the alphabet as we move into September. And it's going to be storm after storm after storm. 
Uh, don't be surprised if we see three and four hurricanes at once in the Atlantic Ocean making their way towards the Leeward Islands. Some of them may come up in this direction, but again, this is the time of year, and this is what we have to worry about. All right, guys, that's it for now. It is now 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it is Sunday, September 2nd. We have uh, Labor Day tomorrow. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend. For those of you not in this torrential downpour rain nonsense mess that we're dealing with in the Gulf right now that is just, it's unbelievable, uh, some of these storms that are going on right now. So everyone, please stay safe, stay updated. Um, it's going to be getting close to that time where you're going to want to keep your local weather on uh, with these uh, tropical storm warnings and watches that will be going on from the east coast of Florida all the way through the Panhandle, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and southeast Texas. Uh, more than likely, we'll see tropical storm warnings within the next few days, and then we will really hone in on Hurricane Florence uh, when it finally decides where in the northeast it wants to go. So as each day goes by, guys, uh, Florence is getting closer and closer to the northeast. So um, it's time to keep uh, those eyes open and to stay updated. All right, that's enough from me. I will try to update later on tonight. If not, then tomorrow morning we will have brand new data and uh, much more accurate data to show you. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I hope everyone has a good rest of their weekend, and we will talk very, very soon, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.